All right, let's see here. Just turn on full webcam for just a second. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Um. All right, there we go. All right, we're back and uh, we got some exciting stuff today uh, let's see here as always we have doggy here and now she's eating something she's not supposed to just a second
<laughs> What's a good way to start a stream? Well, well, that's okay. <laughs> All right. We're gonna do several uh, things today. Uh, I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna start with uh, watching a video. It's called uh, Book of Beasts. And uh, after that, I'll probably go on to Final Fantasy 2. And um, uh, the only thing I'm missing from uh, from the achievements for Final Fantasy 1 is the puzzle game. So I might just do that to, uh, s at some point of the day. But yeah. Come. And doggy say hello. Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, we're gonna. All right, see here. I'm just gonna drop my Twitch. One second. Uh, there we go. Alright, so I'm just gonna go straight into it. Let's see, we're gonna go over to the live scene. Uh, and oops, yeah, there we go. Alright, now we're just gonna fit this in somehow. And it's uh, actually. Hey, Beast Lord! Hey, man! Thank you for the follow. Very much appreciated. Um, so this, yeah, Beast Lord is this is Beast Lord's video, and uh, we just need to fit this to the screen first. But uh, I don't know how, and somehow it's uh, blocking my camera. So that's weird. Uh, let's see. All right, so there we are. There's my camera. Awesome. All right, so. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Beast Lord's channel. Uh, from the looks of it, this looks like a uh, book of beasts. Goblin. Let's see, book of beasts, goblins, page one, Final Fantasy. So I'm assuming this is about uh, creep lore, or uh, yeah, like monster lore for Final Fantasy specifically. Uh, also. Uh, for me, it doesn't really matter how many viewers there are here. I th that doesn't really matter to me. Like if if there's like nine views on this uh, video or nine million, that's uh, that's something I don't care about honestly. Because and especially for me, because I've been editing like crazy lately. I've had like seriously like the last two weekends were like yeah probably somewhere between twenty and 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 twenty five hours just editing. So this is someone who's made like, you know, 22 videos, I uh, know 22 uh, minutes with content and kind of lapping everything together into like a, a cohesive train of thought. That's, uh, yeah, that's quite, uh, quite impressive. So we're going to be honest and fair with this review. Yes, first season will be all Final Fantasy and want to improve as I go, so thank you. No, no worries, man. Uh, I do this for fun. Yeah, it takes time. Trust me, you will grow if this is what you love. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I can imagine. Like, I, I just spent, like, so many hours myself editing my first, like, full uh, playthrough. So I have, like, uh, yeah, no problem, man. Thank you for lurking. Uh, yeah, so you just have fun. Don't worry about this. I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll just uh, do your review. Pretty busy, so need to go. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, so I'll talk with you later, man, and I'll just, uh, I'll do this video for you right now, and and we'll talk about the content. And I'll give you, I'll just do this on stream because then you can get my full reaction, everything like. Uh, because facial and um, like, I mean like facial reactions and and um, yeah, like basically just talking like this is a much better 
uh, feedback than me just texting you. So I'll, I'll just do this all on stream and take it as you will. Alright, so we're gonna stop the music now and we'll get on with the video. I'll just turn on here. See. Alright. So I watched like two minutes of this and then I stopped. So I'll I'll just play it from the beginning. Small, typically green, mischievous creatures found in nearly every fantasy world. Yeah. Usually taking the role of a vicious monster, every starting hero must overcome. Even if it's just to have some walking money. Yeah. <laughs> so why goblins as the first of my Final Fantasy creature video series? Yeah. Well, because it's the very first creature on the Final Fantasy 1 monster list. All right. And because goblins are one of my favorite creatures in any fantasy universe. Yeah. Also, goblins have gotten such a great reputation, so I kind of have to. And you know, th this part of... Uh this part will basically while I'm watching this this will both mostly be like reaction as in like as a consumer not as in terms of that much feedback I'll I'll put my train of thought more cohesively at the end but right now I'm just gonna enjoy your work and uh, just yeah pay attention to your video basically All right, so that's nice. Goblins, as stated in European folklore, is a form of fairy or mischievous spirit. They are unpleasant, vengeful, and greedy spirits that hate humans and typically use their magical abilities to terrorize humans. Yeah, they're assholes. <laughs> but not all of them are considered bad. Some are known to discipline the children of parents when they misbehave, mm -hmm. or leaving gifts when they are good. Usually reflecting their nature, the magic they possess can appear fairy-like or demonic. Creatures of close relation include brownies, dwarves, duendas, gnomes, imps, and kobolds. In most fantasy universes, goblins typically fit this description usually found in hordes, truly taking to heart strength in numbers. Yeah, that's Usually true. possessing low levels of human intelligence to make use of tools, traps, or even hold a conversation and communicate. Sometimes <laughs> they are the minions of an evil lord of mm. darkness. Or is, they are is that uh, Gaslo? I think that's Gaslo. Or who, who else could it be? I think it's Gaslo. I'm pretty sure, but I could be wrong. Steer friendly neighbors with a knack for making contraptions or using their natural stealth to be great thieves. Hmm. Some worlds, they try their best to avoid humans. In others, they try their best to live among them. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the game. That's the game. Good vibes. So, good transition there. I like that. Usually a yellowish brown complexion with comfortable looking leather pants, pointed shoes, and a sporty green tunic. They have sharp claws with a fairly noticeable long nose and typically wield your basic saber appearing weapon. Yeah. Physical description of goblins really doesn't change much until Final Fantasy 11, 13, and 14. Now, like most RPGs, monsters have yeah, color that, swapped very. That's a very good observation, actually, because. When you look at the goblins, the goblins in final, like whenever I see a FF14 goblin, I don't necessarily think, oh, that's a goblin. But you know, um, like for example, in, uh, in uh, FF1 or FF2 or, uh, you know, World of Warcraft, I feel like it's very st stereotypical. But if you look like, um, where is he? description of goblins really doesn't change much until 
Final Fantasy 11, 13. Yeah, right? here you go. That Final Fantasy 11 one. So they look kind of similar in 14, but they're both MMOs. And uh, yeah, I haven't played 13, so I can't say anything about that. But yeah, I, I don't. I, I kind of get that that's in Goblin as well. But uh, yeah, the, the FF1, the pixel remastered Goblins are like very stereotypical, basically. And 14. Now, like most RPGs, monsters have color swapped variants. This is no different in Final Fantasy. Creatures such as Red Cap, Munchkin, and Black Goblin fight pretty much the same way as your starting goblins, but usually higher stats, so these don't need to be mentioned much. Mm -hmm. Goblins in Final Fantasy are classified as giants. Oh! For some strange reason. What? Putting them in a class with ogres and giants. The only way I can make sense of it is that they work closely together, so the denizens just clump them together in a single category. Yeah. They may be related due to the ogre killer weapon, dealing additional damage to goblins as well as others in that category. Or a blacksmith. You know, I, I like the way that um, Beast Lord uh, Jay here is. He's, um, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of speculatory. Uh, Beast Lord's like, they may be, and I, I like that. That, that you because you don't want to go, this like if you don't know for sure, like you you can just speculate, and th there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, that's that's a good way of, because um, if you get like speculation, you get into the whole fantasy of how things work, and people might have uh, several kind of uh, how to say. People might have different uh, experiences and, and different perception to the lore, so yeah, I like that. That made the weapon just hates goblins and added it to be a dick. <laughs> okay. Seriously, goblins really aren't that powerful. The warriors of light can take out a horde with simple daggers and swords. In just about every Final Fantasy, it doesn't take much more work than that. Mm -hmm. But I do believe this gives us a good base to see where goblins are in the scale to humans in this world. Okay. There are nine stats in Final Fantasy 1. Now let's compare these stats to some of the Warriors of Light. Most of these stats are double that to a goblin. Makes sense. Yep. Final Fantasy 1 characters do fit within their respective jobs, meaning they must have had some sort of training and that's why certain stats are far beyond goblins. Mm -hmm. Possibly even being Makes the sense. warriors affects these stats. When you bring up Garland's stats, that's when things become interesting. Ah, Garland! If I'm trying to compare goblins to basic human beings, then you need to use Garland. He's the first boss of the game and is a very powerful human. A True. whole body with the best training and education to back it up. Yep. So powerful that instead of sending their own knights to rescue the princess so powerful he he uh, uh, i'm not gonna curse so powerful he went 2000 uh spoilers by the way so uh, cut it right here if you haven't if you don't want spoilers so far powerful he went 2000 years back to the future uh, to the past uh made like a whole chaos and crazy things happen and made uh, and made uh, and made five past uh, warriors of light into bats and then having us haunt him back to his shrine and then eventually man that was so epic ah oh, i wish i could play final fantasy one uh, for the first time again uh, oh like december Last month was a good month in terms of um, gaming experience for me. But yeah, let's let's get back to this. I'm derailing. They asked the fabled Warriors of Light to handle it, probably in fear of great loss in soldiers. Yeah, I just played this. Now, when comparing goblins nice. to humans, you can look at their stats and what they do in their lives for reference. Attack sack is a 4, evasion a 6, and intelligence is a 1. Yeah. Now goblins are dressed like thieves, that's obvious. Thieves steal things, mm -hmm. goblins are usually always located near cities, 
probably to rob passerbys yeah. and bring the booty back to camp somewhere. Your average human being in a world like this would most likely be a farmer or weaving cloths. Not really in need for great physical strength, no skills in combat, so being able to evade someone is probably out of the question. But I'd say the intelligence score would probably be the same. Think about it. Mm -hmm. I know it's a score of one, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're stupid. Just ignorant. A farmer in this world filled with monsters is probably still only concerned about their crops or the weaver their cloth. Goblins were probably killed by humans all the time before the decline of the crystals. So now they're able to provide for their goblin families. It's all they really need to know. Kill humans, take booty. So an intelligence score of one should be something they share. Not that they're stupid, but ignorant and no need for knowledge past sure. their own yep. environment. I can buy that. Now let's take a close look at Garland. Sure. A knight of his stature knows the customs of other kingdoms. They have met dwarves, can read, write, knowledge of creatures in the area and foreign to prepare for anything. Probably has a decent medical knowledge. Which explains why he has an intelligence score of 12. Which is very close to the white and black mage. And even hmm, beyond really? the red without using magic really? himself. But is he that may true? possess magical knowledge. If we assume your average knight has half of Garland's stats, then yes, Garland can easily handle a horde of them. So Goblin's being... Well, I would expect that because Garland is like... He's like the... Um, who would like... Who would be like the rival of Aragorn in uh, Lord of the Rings? Or, um, yeah, he, he, Gar because Garland is a badass. Like, you, uh, you might say he's like the first boss, but like he's very, in he, he was intelligent, intelligent enough to be able to go back to uh, the past, right? So I would expect him to be like really smart, high IQ guy, uh, and obviously very strong, fit, uh, all of those things obviously so uh, yeah and just a bit above human beings or at least your average human makes sense at least to me but also look at how they fight goblins have been seen fighting alongside wolves and other manner of creatures that they should have no business being around they may have trained them hell sometimes they work alongside ogres Maybe the share resources among each other's and protection against those said humans or other more dangerous monsters. There are even some exceptionally powerful goblins such as knockers that oh. are very dangerous with pretty respectable stats for goblins. All right, but I that haven't makes got, sense gotten, they are found um, in the location with very dangerous creatures. In the I haven't gotten this far in, into the games yet because I'm still at Final Fantasy 2. But yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to see these uh, uh, knockers. Because I don't think this is FF1. I could be wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen these creeps yet. Whisperwind Cove, such as Earth Trolls and Yellow Dragons. Clearly like humans, goblins adapt to wherever they call home. They can even be considered the top of the food chain alongside with humans. Even their attacks throughout the series are simple moves that any person can learn with time. Throughout Final Fantasy, basic goblins have typically always attacked with their dagger or saber weapon. In Final Fantasy 2, they have an attack called bow, which is exactly as it sounds, but usually once they get in trouble, they just run away from the battle. In later Final Fantasy, some goblins have the ability to use magic. Dangerous, but nothing that can't be handled. Goblin mages in Final Fantasy IX, for example. Now, if I saw a griffin use magic, I wouldn't call it a griffin mage. You'd just call it a griffin. Calling them mages probably shows that they've had to learn this skill, something that was probably passed down to them to use. Also, they could possess some natural talent and learn it on their own, 
but then look at their attacks. Sleepal is used to put enemies to sleep, probably to steal from them, you can finish them off, or just to run from them. Yeah. Vanish is a protective spell that prevents enemies from hit targeting them with physical attacks. And Thundaga is just an offensive spell to finish them off. Goblins have been known to use potions, something only an intelligent creature like a human with knowledge of it. And yeah. So this is really coming together for me now. So like I I, I like this uh, FF approach, okay? So because if you take like the whole goblin spectra, say like or any any creep for that matter, but say like you would take all goblins, like not just Final Fantasy, but World of Warcraft, Lord of the Rings, uh, back to the 1300s, Irish goblins, English goblins, uh, Scandinavian goblins, and all, so it would be way too much. So what these are, what he does here is, he's taking this within the concept of one universe or to say it or uh, to say it in uh, more uh, in another term like all the ff universes you have like all the way from ff1 to i'm assuming ff14 basically and so from so there is his kind of uh, spectrum of uh how to say like every everything relevant to look at so he's taking all this kind of data that he's found of, a bit of creeps and he looks at them well like uh, observing whatever they can do and by that he can kind of e explain to us the the um uh yeah like basically whatever they're able to and yeah that's that's really interesting to me actually it would be um because um i don't feel like i know eno uh, enough about creeps in this game so I, I definitely think there's there there's definitely an audience for this kind of uh, video. It does. Hell, they use bows in Final Fantasy II once again. But there is one move in a goblin's arsenal. A move so beyond the scales of power, it had to be taught by a goblin god. That is the Goblin Punch. What? Goblin Punch is one of my favorite attacks of all time. Why, you ask? Why would you even ask that? It's not a normal punch. <laughs> it's a Goblin Punch. All right. A rapid fire, a small fist that brings imminent destruction to the I can't wait to, I can't wait to try the Goblin challenges Punch. the ultimate sure. hidden technique of the almighty Goblin race. Its first introduction was in Final Fantasy IV. Oh, really? And I say taught by a god because the only Goblin that does it is summoned by Rida in the game. Despite okay. appearing as a simple, humble goblin with the same physical form as usual, I'm sure it's just being humble, and its true form is one you can only bow to. Goblin Punch itself is a single description. It does a small amount of non-elemental damage to the enemy you target. This changes a bit from each Final Fantasy it appears in, but relatively stays the same, mm -hmm. and continues since Final Fantasy IV to be a weapon in the goblin's arsenal. Clearly something that's on par with the Mega Flare. So we know goblins tend to be the villains by most likely being bandits or thieves. We know they attack the party and most likely normal people when given the chance mm -hmm. and will kill. Yep. But are they... They're, e they're not people. They're, like they don't have the same moral compass as a human being. Uh, or at least like a modern hum human being. I, don't, I can't speak for the FF human, human beings. So yeah, they'll definitely the way i think of goblins as well is they they will kill you given the chance because it's all about and i would expect goblins to be some somewhat intelligent so i would expect them uh, that it that it would be it would be about surviving and and loot and yeah like like beast lord is saying here evil there are many types of crime you can recognize good from bad or right from wrong but then you have crimes of necessity. Then you have crimes that had no cause. To me, evil is to commit acts that directly hurt others for no other reason than enjoyment or for mere material gains. For example, wolves hunt and kill for food. A starving person 
may hurt someone for a meal if it comes to it. An asshole will hurt someone to steal their food and then throw it away because all they wanted to do was to hurt that said person. Yeah. Not exactly evil, but going in that direction. Yeah, because it's evil intent. Like if the intention itself is evil, then that's uh, like an evil practice. Uh, I can I can agree with that. Like, uh, uh, and then yeah, I, I'm not gonna go into the whole moral compass uh, monologue because well, I'll just sit there for an hour and talk and talk basically. So I'm not gonna do that. But yeah, I agree with uh, with the beast lord here. Absolutely. It's clear goblins are dressed as bandits. They are found all over human areas without actually being inside cities or places once owned by humans but have been abandoned. The ones found in the wild can also be seen with creatures like ogres or other beasts that they've probably trained or probably in exchange of resources for protection. Goblin camps or settlements are probably found all over the place. Goblin guards, for example. If you're a guard, you're right typically <laughs> protecting someone Pixel or remaster. Maybe when the party is close to one of these possible settlements or hideouts is when you start to see these guys. Yep. With higher stats than usual goblins. They're already at Castle Cornelia in the first game waiting for you. Ready to get you. Before you know that you need to go to the uh, sanctuary to rest your people and pay guild for it. They'll be right there before you've trained yourself. This is seen even more in Final Fantasy XI and XIV. Goblins are a part of the Beastman tribe with a deep array of lore. Oh, so yeah. much yeah, that that's I true. shouldn't get into it in this video. But since I love goblins so much, maybe another time. But they are people in this world. Helping where they can or just trying to get on with their lives. Or they can form their own sex and become something not so nice. Yep. Better examples are the Goblin Prince in Final Fantasy II and the Goblin King in Crystal Chronicles, clearly showing a hierarchy within their own culture. Also in Final Fantasy V, goblins are seen trying to... <coughs> yeah, that's that makes them uh, very intelligent. Like, whenever you... Hey, that's true, because in Final Fantasy XIV, you have like... Uh, you have like 88 um, hierarchies or something. You have like... Uh, an infantry line from from like oh. yeah that's true so so like whenever you've like made hierarchies then that at that point you're you're quite intelligent so but i would expect the ff14 maybe to be a little more intelligent than than your usual pixel uh, goblins <coughs> take advantage of unconscious players during a massive earthquake where most animals would have taken cover somewhere. Another great example is found in Final Fantasy VII, a location called Goblin Island. Mm. Goblin Island is isolated far from any human society, not only yeah. fitting the desire for goblins to stay away from humans. Yeah, this, this, this is the interesting part for me because as a very... Um, as a new player to the Final Fantasy universe, and I'm, I'm quite new. So I basically played FF for FF14 for uh, about six months, and then I finished FF1. Uh, and before that, sure, I've seen some FF when I, whenever I was a child, whenever I was at friend's house and stuff like that, but I never really bought any FF games myself. Uh, and this is kind of why I'm taking this approach playing FF because suddenly I found out by playing FF14 basically I found out there was this huge universe or many several universes uh, with uh, a lot of content and good content not just not just content but like really good content so that, that's why I'm doing this because uh, I get to have fun I get to experience uh, new things and hopefully other people get to see me experiences uh, get to see my experiences and that's that's why i'm having having my stream because uh, i want to want to share i want to share this so yeah but uh, anyways let's let's get back here look at their world 
Shinra had waged war with several countries in their quest for power. The land was literally being drained of life. But on this island, thriving, you had a species of goblins minding their own business, probably trying to avoid Shinra more than anything else. Look at how they are dressed. Clearly, they are dressed like most humans who live in this world, something you can identify with. So are they evil? No, I wouldn't say so. No? Overall, in just about every Final Fantasy, they seem like they're trying to survive by being opportunistic. Like pirates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or staying away from humankind altogether. Even when they are mostly doing bad. Okay, so... Do I agree with Beastlord here? Kinda, but then again, if goblins... If goblins ever would get to a point in an FF game where they would be the dominant race, would they not do evil? I would expect they would do evil stuff because it's all about position it's all about position in terms of hierarchy in the universe so uh, uh, I suppose that evil is pushed back uh, also because they're not of the top of the hier hierarchy and I think this comes to it doesn't matter if it's humans wolves goblins demons uh, what have you vampires like if if you Whenever you find yourself at the top of the food chain, uh, you will encounter evil, uh, you, at least e some evil uh, people of that race. Uh, it doesn't really matter how many, but there will definitely be some people at the top of the food chain doing evil stuff, because that's... Uh, that's um, uh, whenever... Whenever you're like the the top uh, of of the hierarchy, there are no boundaries. I mean, like supposedly, like there are only fic there are only like boundaries that are uh, uh, the, the the only boundaries you have are the one you make yourself basically whenever you're top top of the food chain. So yeah. Um, I would assume goblins in in a different universe they could be very evil and even if even in the FF universe if they were ever to get some kind of control things they don't appear to be in service of any type of dark lord or entity like some of the other creatures in the game so in D&D &D terms I guess I'd classify them as chaotic good a chaotic good character does what is necessary to bring about change for the better. Disdains, bureaucratic organizations that get in the way of social improvement, and places of high value on personal freedom, not only for oneself, but for the others as well. Chaotic good characters usually intend to do the right thing, but their methods are generally disorganized and often out of sync with the rest of society. This sounds exactly like goblins, in my opinion when it's from their perspective. They yeah. may not have something like a kingdom, but a value for each other and whatever they call a society. Everyone's good uh, in their perspective. So yeah, sure. Like, uh, that's, that's a part of being evil is a, the ability to rationalize your own um, doings, but, uh, like to rationalize your train of thoughts, yeah, although they do hurt other people or other uh, species uh, and stuff like that you're you're rationalizing it, you're, you're rationalizing it. Um, so yeah sure um, I might not like fully agree with the beast lord here but at the same time I, I, I respect the point of view now let's be honest sure they are probably killed by humans all the time humans own all the major resources so bandits direction is believable but there are exceptions in Final Fantasy XIII, goblins do hunt in large groups, but they're more of a wild animal or an actual monster. So I'd say they are neutral in this regard. In Final Fantasy XV, they are the only versions of them I'd actually consider evil. They only come out at night or inside caves like goblins of lore. They are actual demons or daemons that can't survive at all in the light. 
they probably just kill whatever they can get their hands on. Mm-hmm. They still have their classic look, but now appear as a more dark fae-like creature. I would like you all to forgive me for this. Gob bloody gook. Goblet gook. Gobbledy gook. <laughs> yes. Was a minion of x in Final Fantasy V. But of course, goblins like this are usually evil by association. And there are a few other examples like this. There are a few possibilities I'd like to bring up. Imps in Final Fantasy. Whoa. 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 What's that? I've never seen anything like that before. (laughs) What's that? That's the... That's like... That's the weirdest goblin I've ever seen. With wings. Maybe in some worlds, goblins do sell their souls. Whoa. Some unknown- Whoa, man, these are some crazy, crazy goblins. Whoa. Some force to gain magical powers to become imps. In Final Fantasy 15, imps and goblins are extremely similar. And in Final Fantasy 1, they were called imps in the original. Maybe it's even just a state some goblins can take if they have enough magical power. Mm-hmm. Goblins have been described as elves before. So maybe the dark elf from Final Fantasy IV could be a goblin born with crazy magical powers, or given those powers. After all, through Final Fantasy worlds, people or creatures that tend to use their powers for evil tend to be warped physically. RPGs have a simple classification for power. Higher stats equals stronger monsters. Yep. But I'd like to establish a threat level for the creatures we go over. Okay. Not just based on overall power, but their effect on society, their environment, goals, and other factors. I'll have further defined later. All right. But I'd like to label goblins a two out of five stars. I don't think that if they did manage to have a large society, like a kingdom, they would just rampage and destroy everything. Like I said before, they seem to be a people with their own culture and society, with goals oriented in protecting themselves. So a 2 out of 5 fits this perfectly. But like I said, I will do a later video to go deeper into these threat levels. Something far more defined because otherwise, for example, in Final Fantasy IV, the Mist Dragon would be weaker than a group of goblins found a couple of hours later in the game, right? That's not true. Yep. So just a few words from me. This will probably be the only time I really do this at the end of a video, unless it's something important I would like to tell you guys. Uh, This is my first video I actually really edited, cared about something. It's from my soul. Yep. Uh, Want it to be funny, but not cringe and wanted to give as accurate information as possible not yeah before. you came through man don't worry about hopefully it. i'll get better with this over time and meet some people who will give some constructive criticism mm-hmm. and share similar interests uh share their point of view so that i can get a better reconstruction of what these creatures could be yeah and the reason i'm struggling uh struggling is the bad not a good term uh I'm coming up with a lot of this on my own because Final Fantasy creatures don't really have any lore behind them. Nothing like D&D where every creature has at least something, right? Oh, so goblins... But uh, then again, that that is what could uh, that is uh, what could make this uh, this uh, Book of Beast uh, series really interesting. It's because of the uh, the relationship of the race from one game to another, because there's no. Uh, true mapping of it is it really i don't think there's like a, a square soft book or a square enix book solely based on just the creeps so yeah this could be like a a very good mapping of it of it all and yeah i, I really like that uh, idea and uh, and then again uh, I'll, I'll just finish the last uh, two minutes and then i'll i'll uh, go on from there for example i really do love goblins i think they're cool uh, some of my favorite creatures in any universe so I figured this was good and also first monster in Final Fantasy 1 that you ever encounter 
credit. Uh, figure it was good. Uh, looked at them throughout every Final Fantasy game. Wanted to give good information about them. Uh, and then expand on that from what I see. So, yeah, when I'm going into Goblin, seem like in every game that they are more of a people. Yeah, that's just kind of what I see. Yeah, so... As you can tell, I'm not editing this part at all. I'm just trying to give you guys something from the heart. Don't worry about anyway, that. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll try to get better at this as we go. And yeah, I have, since doing this video, I've come up with actually several ideas. Uh, I didn't think I would, actually. Like, uh, I was sitting there looking at God and I was like, okay, what the hell can I actually do next with something interesting and similar to go on but there's actually a lot and i'm yeah. trying not to limit myself to just final fantasy there will most likely be a lot of final fantasy creatures that i'll do first but i don't want to limit this to final fantasy because rpgs a ton of rpgs have a lot of fantastic monsters there's mm -hmm. a lot of similarities uh if you compare it to other rpgs you know everybody gets inspiration from someone which is why in the beginning yeah, goblins are from folklore, right? This is old. Yeah, I wanted to give you all a bit of a educational rise, right? Once again, not harping too long. Make it quick. Yeah. Something interesting. And went from there. So, anyway, I, I feel like I dragged this on a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, I'm Beast Lord J. Hopefully, I'll catch you all. Hopefully, you'll enjoy this. Hopefully, you'll enjoy the next one. Oh. Um, and I'll try to give little trailers, I'd say, about uh, where I'm going to go with it before I can meet some people and gather ideas. Mm -hmm. So, please have a good one. Hit that like, subscribe. <laughs> I guess I got to start doing something like that now. Oh, uh, yeah. You see, I, I, I do <laughs> want to absolutely man. do this, be entertaining for all you. Yeah. But, and, uh, yeah, please. Have a good one. Hope to catch you again in a later video. All right. All right. Okay, Beast Lord, thank you very much. Thank you for a good video. Uh, so we're going to do... Oops. Uh, we're going to go back here to this one. Yeah, we're going to hit uh, a like and subscribe here for Beast Lord. Now, there was some, uh, there was some uh, good content here. Uh, absolutely so um, obviously uh, Beast Lord just like myself is a new content creator and um, yeah so he spends a couple of minutes here in, in the end just uh, explaining uh, you know that it, it was his first video and I, I can relate to that because I actually just finished my first video myself yesterday and that's like a huge highlight video all my streams put together in one uh, it's actually it's five and a half hours of content okay so it's like it's a it's highlighting all the gameplay in ff1 for uh, for those who've never played it basically or for or any final fantasy uh, anyone interested in final fantasy for that matter so that will go live in about four hours looks like but yeah i'm derailing so yeah, there there are some things here in terms of um, uh, in terms of feedback I want to give Beast Lord before we uh, finish up here. So before I move on, I just want to get a paint up here just a second. We gotta give this guy some uh, some good criticism and some positive feedback as well. Let's see. Uh, media source, uh, screen capture, maybe. Uh, let's see, paint. I'm just looking up uh, paint on my Streamlabs right now. Let's see here. All right, here it is. All right, we got it. So, and we want to put that right here. Okay, so feedback let's see and we'll actually put this here about here okay 
So, uh, so I'm assuming uh, some. Uh, okay, we'll start with some positives. So, so good things is that. It, uh, in terms of audience, I feel like you uh, you might not this know yourself, but uh, it seems like to me that you really you know your audience, and that's because you're interested in this yourself. So whenever you're interested in something, it's very easy for other people who's interested in the same to to relate, and then also uh, the content itself is as far as i know i could be like completely far-fetched I, I i if i did a search on youtube maybe i be, would be 100 percent wrong and that doesn't matter if 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 there are other people who's made something similar because this is still unique content and the reason for that is because there are no specific guidelines in terms of final fantasy uh, 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 this is the way I see it, something completely new. And that's probably the strongest thing about this video is that the content is unique. And by that, here comes my first criticism. And I know that uh, Beast Lord might want to um, do other uh, universes beside FF, uh, but I would like if you have at least if you have this book of beasts that's like final fantasy then i would kind of separate that from the other ones or you could also do like a book of beasts goblins final fantasy goblins world of warcraft and so on and so on so you could go, you could do like a whole goblin series like final fantasy world of warcraft uh, tales of uh, lord of the rings and 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 on and on and on that could be another way to structure it so you either have to structure it by the creep or the game and i would um if i were to give you an advice i would go with final fantasy uh long enough at least because uh, if you if you want to meet more people like me i suppose people who's actually interested in the content because I'm not only a content uh, content creator, I'm a perfect target in terms of audience here. So if you want to like meet more people like me or get to more people like me, then the way to go would be more Final Fantasy. And you can expand from there, like let's say uh, to uh, a year from now or whatever, like if you keep pumping out videos, good content like this, of course you could expand, but I would I would stick with one one universe to begin with. Uh, anything in the top of my head? Um, so there's um, there's very obvious to me. There's a lot of uh, love in this video. Absolutely, like uh, it's very easy to see that. Uh, this uh, this content means something to you, and I uh, honestly that's probably the mo uh, one of the most important things because uh, as a viewer, it's very easy to see when whenever uh, s someone does something and it's not really uh, and they're not uh, and it's it there's other intentions than actually just making the content and I, I think you did that really well you did that really well like because i can see that you care you care about the lore you care about the fantasy you care about the game and that that's got to be like a, uh at least for me that's like a principle like whenever i stream whenever i play something doesn't matter if i'm on stream off stream like i gotta do the things i love it cannot be purely secondary in a like even in my main job as a kindergarten teacher i couldn't be working 40 hours a week as a kindergarten teacher if i didn't love to love to play and 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 love those and love the interactions basically so it doesn't matter if it's work or play um so yeah 
Um, yeah, there, there are some, there are some minor stuff like there's a small audio, uh, small audio change like where was it? I think it's like wherever they call. It. Throughout Final Fantasy. Yeah, I think this like, and this is just like nit nitpicking basically, so they don't take this too much to heart. But there's like. Uh, Maybe like a minute here where the audio is uh, not as good. Um, yeah, there's like one, one minute with uh, audio defect. I can write because it's it, you could kind of call it call it a defect, uh, and and that that's not that doesn't really matter. But as like. If you're ever, if I'm gonna nitpick at something, that that would be the one thing I definitely would have uh, edited um, away. So yeah, um, anything else here? Uh, let's see. Oh, you did didn't see? Like, uh, let me show you. And you pr you probably know this yourself. I I would assume. Uh, yeah, like like here, like at the ninth minute, basically. So yeah, that that is as thorough. I'll go um, on this um, on this video, uh, and I'd gotta say thank you for the content. I know myself uh, as I've just finished my own content. Um, you know there's a lot of work behind this so uh, i'm definitely going to check out more uh, so um, yeah i would be very interested to see where where this um, where this is going <coughs> maybe one last thing is um, the tags because in youtube you have like 500 uh, um, 500 late letters basically and yeah, there, there's space for way more tags here, basically, that could get you more views, but that's not uh, directed at the content. Uh, that's more directed at other stuff relating to con re related to content. So yeah, I would also do something with the tags here, for sure. Get in trouble. All in right. Media. So uh from here i wanna let me see here what do i want to do uh i think i want to do the puzzle game actually uh, let me just uh, close that yeah so uh Take a quick look here. So, we'll look at the achievements before I uh, continue. So, if we take a look here, I'm only missing the puzzle game. We've done all the other stuff, even the war mech. So, I'm uh, very excited for that. Uh, what? My dog just puked. <laughs> uh, oh. I need to I need to clean up. Just a second, my my dog uh, just uh, just puked at the floor. <laughs> I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Poor doggy just uh, couldn't ha handle her uh, food today. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right. <clears throat> Let's do this. Man, it's been a long time since FF1, or not that long, but it's uh, before New Year's. And we only got one thing left to do. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, gonna, gonna go straight to the ship and we'll get the puzzle game done. So hugging. Let's see here. So, how do we do this? Okay, so uh, hold down the confirm button and tap the back button, okay? So we'll do that. So this should be, uh, this should do the trick. Uh, okay, it's not working. Uh, uh, let's see here. Hold down the confirm button and continuously tap the back button. Okay, so we'll we'll try again. Come on now. Ah, there we go. All right, we got it. Very nice. Here it comes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is I think this is a good way to start here. Uh, there and there and there. Okay. see here uh, I think this yeah so there and this is hard this is really hard um. okay so we got the one nice So now we need uh, two. So here we go. There. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now the one is. Oh, that's not good. Uh, that's not good at all, actually. Uh, let's see. Ah, I think I know. So if I do this, this. This, this, this. No, <laughs> man, why, why? Uh. <laughs> why, why, why am I? Why is this so hard, man? Uh. Okay, so. 
Okay, okay, we, we got it. We got it. All right, there we go. Nice. Only several letters to go. Hey, that was... Oh, we were lucky there. Got lucky. Okay. So if I can... Can I just roll through like this? It looks fine, actually. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Getting better and better. Now, let's see. Um, so, we need the 6 and the 7 and the 8. Okay, so... Uh, I'm just thinking how to do this. Uh, there we go. So I don't care about the letters below six, to be honest, because we gotta get, we gotta do one letter at a time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Very nice. Okay, and then it's basically the same way, only backwards, because the eight was there. Let's see. All right. Uh, oh, how do I do that? Uh, Cause I gotta, I gotta get the eighth up there somehow. Uh, so I had to move the seven a little bit. Oh, now I have to move the seven all the way down. Uh, okay. Uh, that's not good. this work maybe okay so they're in wrong positions but oh okay okay what if I put the eight there that might work if I if I if I go backwards seven eight no no that doesn't work <laughs> man I'm a, I'm in trouble here uh, uh, we, we gotta solve this we should be able to figure a way out here what if I put some air between them basically Okay. No, that doesn't work. Hmm. This is a tough one. Although I'm doing it blind, obviously. Like, I could... Like, sure, I could just look at the internet and just get done with it. But I wanna... I, w I wanna try to figure it out myself. Uh, let me see here. So, I feel like I should have the 8 there. Ah, yeah, yeah, very nice. We got it. I knew that was good. Okay, we want the 10 to follow along here. I think. So yeah, here we got 9. Uh, so what did I do? I had the biggest number first, basically. How did I do that? Okay, I started with the biggest number. So I basically had 8 here and then 7 here. And then it worked itself out. So I gotta do the same here. I have to get 9 in a position behind uh, 10, basically. 
Oops. Yeah. So how to do that? Okay, so if I go here. Yeah, that, that doesn't help. Uh, yeah. So I, I want the 10 to be there first. Because that's what I uh, that's what I did with the 8 and the 7. So I want the 10 to be here and then I want the 9 to be wherever is empty. Uh, but how do I do that? Oops. Uh, I might have to uh, change the order for the other pieces. Okay. Uh, no. No. All right. Hey, sugar cookies. Very nice to see you, man. And welcome back. Um, yeah, last two rows can be very challenging. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm trying my <laughs> I'm trying my best, but uh, not having. Uh... So yeah, so I fi I finally I finally managed the nine and the ten. And I'm very afraid I, I might have to break them up again. Okay. Uh, I know I want 15 to be the last in order. And then I also, I need to, <laughs> I need 11 to. Ah oh man, this is so tough. Okay. And there and, oh, I might, I might have it. Ah yeah. Look at that! Very nice! We did it! We got it done! That's so awesome! Uh, let's see here. Continue puzzle? Nah, uh, I can just... <laughs> Luckily woke up just in time. <laughs> yeah, I've been on for an hour, but uh, you're you're just about in time. Absolutely. Um, let me see. So I finished the game. I finished the 15 puzzle. But for some reason, I'm not uh, I'm not awarded. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, so not awarded with the achievements, that sucks. Did I do something wrong? Why, why wasn't I awarded? That's so weird. Um. Okay, sure. Um, I'll I'll try to hit the uh, update. See, just checking. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm gonna assume that it's just gonna take some time to update. Uh, so yeah, if not, I'll just do it again. So yeah. Uh, man, I really, I really miss uh, FF1 because uh, uh, I miss Gandalf. I miss my black mage. 
I miss Billy and Zack and Mangini as well. So yeah. And look at look look at my 999,999 gil. It was a good time. So yeah. We'll we'll save here and then Uh, I'll just, um, let's see. Close menu. Yeah, I'll just have to click it directly at the desktop, it seems like. Okay. So we got that done. And uh, by the way, Sugar, uh, whenever you were away, I did, uh, oh, there we go. I got the achievement. I got... <laughs> so I got the achievement. Hidden game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off the main game here and enter and open Steam. How do I do that? Do I put it like here, maybe? Uh, let's see. In stream, fit to stream, no. Yeah, the, uh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, ch I'll, 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 I'll show you the steam whenever I also get the master of one achievement. Then, then I'll show you. So yeah, also. Uh, yeah, I didn't tell you. I finished my video. I finished my video yesterday. And I spent all weekend edit editing it and also last weekend. But yeah, you've, you've uh, seen like the most of the content already. Uh, uh, but yeah, this is like a huge highlight rail of ev everything I've been through basically through FF1. Uh, every every boss, every dungeon, uh, every cave, every uh, every relevant piece of information from the NPCs, I ended I ended up at about uh, six hundred clips basically. So yeah, it was my first great endeavor into YouTube. Uh, just a second. Sorry, sorry about that. So yeah, um, uh, my my dog might just might have uh, puked. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. Just a quick second. I'll be right back.
Okay, here we go. So poor Arya just puked a little bit. And now she's drinking, clearing her mouth. Poor doggy. Yeah, we, we gave her some rests of our food and there was some kind of uh, vegetables she probably couldn't handle, I assume. So yeah. She uh, tries to hump the sofa. In at at, at so <laughs> sometimes she tries to hump the sofa. Sofa. So yeah, we can't uh, can't have any any of that. All right. So here we go. FF two, and it's our second day. Very nice. Uh, it's been a long time uh, since uh, been actually quite some time uh, when was the last stream I think it was 28th let me check yeah our last FF2 stream was on the 28th of December so six days ago are you done can I do my stream now do you want to do you want to entertain them? Do you want to continue, or can I uh, can I take over? Can I do the show, or do you want to? Hmm? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. 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 All right. No. Nice. Just, just a second. <laughs> we, we gotta, we gotta. I gotta help my dog. All right, nay, Arya, nay. What a mood she is! <laughs> She's in such a mood today. What is this? What is this, Arya? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You better let me stream now, okay? I know you want attention, but uh, now you better let me stream, okay? All right. Okay, I'm tr trying to get back to FF2. So, here is our file. Uh, and we did uh, four hours. Four hours of uh, nice content. Uh, and I, I remember, yeah, I remember now. We were about to go to Sid. That was it. We, we did the Mithril. We got the mithril from the cave, we almost died, like we had the one MP left to use for the teleport and we almost died. So that was crazy. Uh, I'm assuming this game might be just a little more grindy than the first game because there are, and there are, uh, there might be more strategical things I have to do in order to survive in this game compared to, um, FF1. Uh, by the way, I love those airships flo flying around because it makes the world feel like it makes it just that little animation coming through. It makes it feel uh, a lot more living. So yeah, that's uh, that's really nice. I like that a lot. So yeah. Anyways, we gotta check. Uh, yeah. So all tier. This was our starting city, the home of the king and the princess. And then Gatria was that small town. 
uh, I'm sure we're gonna go back to Finn because there's still eight chests to be had. And then Paloom we got uh, after the canoe. Uh, once one understands the mechanics of statistics, then it will determine how grindy, grindy the game may become. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. So yeah, we got the canoe uh, over to Paloom. And then we took the ship to Poft and we met Sid. Very nice. And yeah, we got to Salamand. Uh, we also took a detour to Bavsk. And I don't think I've been in Castle Finn. I'm, I'm not sure. And then the Semit Falls where we got the Mithril. So, man, we have a ton of stuff to do. And Sugar, by the way, uh, before you came on today, I did a reaction for a, uh, a, a streamer named Beastlord J. He have uh, he's a um, Final Fantasy creator from uh, California. It seems like, and um, he uh, he's just made his first uh, uh, video. On YouTube and I, I found him through a hashtag on uh, basically hashtag Final Fantasy on Twitter so yeah he made this uh, video called uh, book of beasts where he talks about goblins and uh, yeah that there's a, a very fresh new content creator uh, so uh, yeah I really liked it and that was like the first 45 minutes of today's uh, stream gotta clear clear my throat here just a little bit oh ah oh, man you, you can never get enough water that's uh, for sure so yeah um yeah, that's uh, it's very fun to meet new people and uh, like people like you, people like Beast Lord. Uh, that's one of my tr uh, one of the most enjoyable things about streaming is I get to meet a lot of cool people. So yeah. Now, before I go on, I just want to tell you what I'm gonna do. So, my plan, going onwards, get to Paloon, take the ship back to Poft, I'm gonna talk to Sid, and he's gonna uh, fly me on his ship or, or something like that. Uh, it's been like a week since I played this, so I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I was um, uh, oh yeah that's right I had to I had to pay the guy inside the city I almost forgot I'm like trying to walk like just playing it's not low like I just played FF1 so I thought I could just walk onto the ship but no it's not my ship oops Yeah. Your folks wouldn't be looking to book passage on a ship, would you? For just 32 gil. We'll see you safely to Puft. Yes. Done. Just board the ship in front of town and off you go. Okay. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> I believe Sid was here. So we're gonna gonna check. Yeah. The legend, the myth himself. Sid. You're here to ride the airship? If you go to cash, there's no place I can't take you.
Uh, I'm gonna ask Dreadnought. Hmm. That oversized garbage scow? Airships aren't big. Uh, airships aren't about how big you build them. Airships are all about what they can do. Okay. You want on the airship, you pay the guy behind me. Okay. Can I interest you folks in a ride on Sid's Pride and Joy, the only airship of its kind in all the world? No matter how far, we'll take you to your destination in the blink of an eye. Of course, transportation of this fine caliber comes at a cost. You interested? Yep. Oh! Oh yeah, and he... Um, wasn't it cash one? If I remembered the lore correctly, I was supposed to go to cash one. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. The airship will be waiting for you outside. Okay, so I'm like I'm like sixty six percent sure it was cash one I had to go to. Uh, but yeah, um, we'll just see about that. We're gonna do a quick save here. And yeah, we'll we'll actually we'll go to an inn or a, a resting place. Make sure we. Make sure we all, we're all healed up. Also, uh, we want to take a look at our uh, items. So 20 potions, 1 ether. Okay, well, that, that will just have to work for now. Alright. Oh, there it is. No. Oh. Blasted goblins. Uh, yeah, you attack. Uh, you just attack as well. Alright. Look at that. Ooh. New city. Kashwan, the city of Kashwan. It looks very nice. Kashwan Keep. Ah, uh, is this like ruins? Oh, this is like a whole. Tea's ready, be right back. Alright. This is like a whole dungeon. Ooh, I don't know if I'm re ready for this. We'll we'll see if I'm ready if I'm ready for this or not. I can't wait to get an AOE. That's that's going to be like uh, It's going to be amazing to get some EO AOE basically. All right. Uh, I remember from the last dungeon that we have to use the MP quite sparingly. At least in the beginning until uh, we got some more gold. Um, yeah. We want to make sure we don't waste uh, MP because the last time... We were we were really lucky last time basically. So yeah. Okay. So do we have to spend no, doesn't look like we have to spend the uh, antidotes. The door is locked. Key items ring. Dreadnought? I'm just trying to ask everything, just to be sure. Yeah. 
Okay, so it doesn't let me. Uh, it doesn't let me enter. Let's see here. So I, I want to try to walk here. No, it doesn't let me. Okay. So it is it too early maybe? Is it too early to be here perhaps? Because it doesn't seem to me like it doesn't really seem like I can walk anywhere. I might be wrong. You know, the uh, battle audio in uh, FF2 is actually just a little bit more dramatic than than the uh, the FF1 audio. No, this is all locked, man. It looks like I was too early. I'm just gonna make sure I'm not um, missing anywhere. Nah, doesn't look like it. Okay. Now, I have a problem. <laughs> the airship transported me all the way here. And now I have to walk all the way back, it seems. Because I can't see any airship. So yeah, we'll, let's hope we don't die and let's save. And we, we want to save file 2 and uh, like just in case we just did something really stupid. Because that could just be the case. And it still smells like uh, puke. I gotta, I gotta check my dog. Just a second. I gotta see what's going on.
Okay, we're back. Poor doggy, man. Poor doggy, just puking. Her uh, fourth time in like uh, 30 minutes. You okay, Aria? Hey. Aria. Get some sympathy points, doggy. Uh, yeah, so it's minus 20 degrees outside and uh, we think that it's her stomach is really upset. We could be wrong. Uh, we, he, she did get some rests for dinner. Uh, there might have been some vegetables that upset her stomach as well. Although usually whenever uh, this happens, we uh, she doesn't puke after it. So... Uh, it might just be the super cold ve weather making her puke like that. So yeah. Anyways, it's all fixed for now. We can continue our video game. So yeah, it looked looked like I wasn't ready for cash one. So we gotta retrace our steps. Like always. Here we go. Uh, back in buffs, but I don't. I don't think we're supposed to go there. I feel like it's early. I might be wrong though, but I certainly feel it's uh, a little early to be there. Um. I know I'm, I'm missing two chests in, um, what's it called? Yeah, Semit Falls, missing two chests there. So I might as well just stock up on uh, a few extra potions. And also I need more than a blizzard. I need like a, a, a fire and a thunder thing. So we could as well just go to Altair, get the basic uh, stuff. Sasquatch. <laughs> All right. So it look it looks like this is the base of operations. Because you got you got like an airship and you got a, a, a ship here. Now we also want to see. Let's see here. Yeah, so we got a magic store here, so we definitely want to see that if we can get some goodies. Now first we're gonna rest a little bit. Make sure our heroes are well rested. Hmm. I hope there's something here, something good. Cure tome, blink tome, protect tome, shell tome. Uh, envelopes, envelopes, envelops the target in magic, raising magic defense when used in battle. Uh, we got, we have cure tome. Yeah, that's that's not what I wanted, actually. Not really what I wanted. Too bad. Uh, 
Let's see. I'll buy cross. Uh, yeah, toad status. That's that's new to me. To cures the toad status and cure stone. These are so expensive. Maiden kiss and gold needle. So yeah, I'll definitely. Uh, it feels a little early to have those. Then, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine for now. Uh, and ether, man, they're they're for now they're so expensive. I'll get one phoenix down, sure, and uh, yeah, I'll go back to Altair and and buy some more MP abilities. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around like this. She she looks better. She's like she's not puking. She's just hanging out. It's uh, she seems fine right now, so that's good. So we got <laughs> we got the situation under control. That's all we want. Okay, here we go. Please have uh, have something, anything. Yet again, it's like cure tome, blink tome. Man, where did I find the other abilities? Hey, welcome back, man. Welcome back. Uh, I'm so curious to where I can find. MP abilities like fire and thunder because I only bought the blizzard one because I was poor So yeah, I'll make sure to check um, Altair yeah, I'll check Altair if there's uh, no MP abilities uh, damaging abilities at least I'll have to go all the way up to Salamance I think so that's hopefully I won't have to do that. Yeah, my my dog in, my dog was puking today, four times. Poor Aria. It's uh, minus 20 degrees outside, so I think it's the weather. Uh, probably because uh, it can be hard on the stomach whenever it's so cold. Especially when it's a lot of wind. Here we go, finally. Fire tome and thunder tome. So yeah, it might be that or it could be... Uh, uh, it also could be um, the food because we gave her some rests of our food so yeah uh, okay here we go uh, yeah this one and this one And teleport, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, why not? Okay. Now, we're gonna see status. So, this interface is new to me.
So strength, spirit, intellect, stamina, agility, magic, attack. Okay, so strength and attack is not the same. Okay. Uh, accuracy, defense, evasion, magic defense. I'm trying to build Arya like uh, like uh, a black mage basically now. I wanted her as a white mage, but then I got Minwu. So we'll just see if I get to keep Minwu or if there will be like an exchange later on because I would really like to get Billy into my party. Okay, so now we're we're all stocked up on potions and what have you. And first order of business is Ah oh man, I keep uh button mashing Q and Tab. Uh first order of business will be Summit Falls. We're gonna you know I'm a completionist to some degree at least, so <coughs> We gotta, gotta go to Summit Falls and get the two treasures we didn't get. I could, it looks like I could just walk the whole way through, but I'm, uh, I'm not tempted to do that because this is much faster. So yeah, we're just gonna take our time. I'm I'm in no rush. I'm gonna enjoy this game just as much as I did FF1. So I'm in no rush to just uh, rush through things. I wanna wanna explore everything the game has to offer. So yeah, the weekend was like, uh, man, I, I think I, I woke up like 9 a.m. both days and I, I usually don't wake up that early during the weekend, but I was so set on finishing the video. So it's like straight, straight away, wake up, uh, give, give doggy. Oh, she's actually here now. Give doggy her her trip, her literal trip, so she can pee pee and poo poo, and then just go straight away editing. And I was finished yesterday, like I think it was around. 11 p.m. and then I've basically been editing somewhere between 12, 10 and 12 hours every day uh, the, those two days I mean and I was <laughs> I was so happy when I uh, whenever I was finished and honestly I could have I probably I could have edited over and over and over and just nitpick every every single little detail but if i if i were to do that then i would never i would never post anything so at one point you just gotta you gotta care a little less and just send it out and that's hard because you, you can feel kind of vulnerable whenever you feel like the product isn't as good as you want it to be and, and such and such but uh, you also you gotta move on also there's because there's there's so many there's so many other things I want to do too so yeah just noticed an increase of on YouTube's limits from 128 gigabytes now it's 256 gigabytes ah oh, that's nice that's nice yeah so the video is uh, 
it ended it, it came out to be like five five hours 30 minutes so that's like i had like at the end of final fantasy i had like 25 hours of of content basically or at least that's my save time on final fantasy so it might be just a teeny tiny more but yeah somewhere around 25 hours uh so it it's basically like 20 percent of everything we've done on stream but then it would only be it's only like interaction between npcs and me and um yeah, just going through like every chest, every 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 major and minor detail detail in the game, uh, and I I didn't want to mess up the order. I just I wanted to show, I wanted it. I wanted to show it as I played it. So yeah, sure. I've been in like let's say I've been in like Chaos Shrine on four different you know four different occasions, but I don't want to. Fi fixate all the chaos shrine i'm just picking chaos shrine now as an example i don't want to make all the chaos shrine into one big pile of content and just call that chaos shrine i want to i want to go through from day one and just follow my experience as i succeed and fail so just showing myself uh whenever i'm hitting a whenever i'm hitting a wall whenever i'm i manage to go straight through uh because i didn't want to make it like a guide video i wanted to make it like a playthrough video so it's not it's not a guide it's just showing the content the the whole game basically the way i played it and then the way i played it is obviously like with m major flaws and like it's not <laughs> nowhere near to being like uh professional or uh, kind of st uh, speed run or anything like that it's just yeah just me doing my thing i suppose so yeah we gotta gotta find these chests here uh, oh this room i remember okay So yeah, the, the video will be out in three hours. I set it to go pu public in uh, in three hours. So w whenever it's midnight here, it will be out. I believe it was this door. I'm just gonna check the other three doors. I'm pretty sure they were all empty. But yeah, I'm gonna gonna check it anyway. Uh, last time I was here, I had to kind of rush through it because um, uh, yeah, I was low on ether and everything, so I just I had to rush through it through it last time. Because I, I kept uh, punching certain mobs for zero over and over. So I put myself to a critical position where I almost died. Uh, I don't want to fight this guy. I remember these guys. Yeah. I'm afraid of these guys. <laughs> Oh, you know, next time I'm actually, I'm going to try spells with the Arya on them. The next time I get them. So I picked up that one. Is this the last room, perhaps? Oops. Doesn't matter.
see here. Time to stock up on some energy. I found this new Norwegian ener energy drink. Uh, it's kind of like Red Bull. And you definitely, definitely don't have this in the States, um, I believe. This is a Christmas energy drink. Uh, Christmas soda. Hellhound energy. Limited edition. Cheers. There we go. Okay, we'll we'll try the chest the nearest to us. No, I mean the door. <clears throat> I never fled uh, really on FF1, but uh, I'm my experience so far is it, it might it might be wise to conserve your energy at times in in this game. Okay, so I'll I'll just put attack for now. Ooh, oh yeah, that the explosion I I remember that. Gotta get some fresh air. Ah, that feels good. Although I can't have it up for long, the window, because... Man, it's freezing outside. Freezing like crazy. Okay, doggy. You okay? Okay, that's enough oxygen for now. See? Oh, this room. I think it was Paul we met here. Oh, maybe that's why I'm missing. I might have checked I might not have checked the two other doors next to this one. It might have been that I just walked directly into here. Cause I can I can remember one chest, but not two. Man, why why are there so many do doors with nothing in them? Kind of frustrating. Just give me all the pain. And another one. Ah. Why game? Why? Right. Here we go. So I was actually on the treadmill today for the first time in a long time. We just got a got a treadmill here. We bought it about a month ago, I believe. Maybe just a little more than a month ago. So yeah. That was 30 minutes and man I'm I'm so out of shape it's uh, I, I almost don't want to think about about it but yeah it was really rough 
The funny thing that happened... And I didn't expect it at all, because whenever I took the... Whenever I ran on the thread Threadmill, uh, Arya, she came over. And she started walking around the Threadmill. Uh, not on the Threadmill, but like walking around it, uh, just seeing how it works. And then she, she just sat right next to the Threadmill where I was running. And she just kept looking like right left right left and it, it you know what it reminded me it reminded me of you know whenever I'm walking her um, whenever whenever she uh, basically whenever she poos I'm like looking right and left so I'm watching I'm watching over her position because whenever a doggy makes number two or poops uh, they're vul they're vulnerable for anything right they're putting themselves in a vul vulnerable position and they're expecting their owner or their flock to protect them to keep the overview and you know whenever i'm running you know i'm kind of sweating and everything i'm c i'm kind of in a, a weakened position myself and i was kind of imagining Maybe that what she's doing. She's because <laughs> she didn't lay next to me. Like she 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 kind of sat and held guard. So that was funny, I think. Okay, here we go. Green green slime. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I want to defend and I'll try the. Thunder. Uh, defend. Because th this this um, this is going to be uh, some practice for Arya, so I just want them to defend. And let's see. Oh, I don't have like a antidote spell. Asuna, probably. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Miss? Okay, we'll just keep auto battling here. I wanna. wanna te I need to test this. Why is it missing? I would assume that that would be like a status ailment thing, but I could be wrong. Okay. Probably, probably not then. Okay. Okay, back. Wanna wanna keep using some thunder. And I'll just attack. Yeah. That's fine. So yeah, we're, we're not really doing like the main story quest line right now. We're just um, just trying out things in the game uh, and the XP is very, very much needed. Okay, we got this chest. Is there anything else here? Can I go? 
No. Doesn't look like it. Ooh, explosion. We gotta gotta use some potions after this match. Here we go, potions. Okay, that's fine. So I know, I know at least where one chest is. I'm pretty sure one of the two chests I'm missing is here. Because I, I had to leave that room, I remember now. I had to leave that room because I had one, <laughs> I had one final MP uh, on Minwoo and I had zero MP on Arya. So, I, so if I was so afraid because I was also out of potions, it was like crazy. Uh, the last, uh, basically the, the last uh, hour on that stream, it was really tight. Uh, so I, I had to use that last MP to just teleport out and make sure I wouldn't die. All right, here we go. Just gotta clear, clear through, through these first. Okay, there we go. Huh? Empty? What? Uh, really? But, uh... That doesn't make sense. Huh? I, uh... I'm, I'm a little lost. I'm trying to think. Mm. That's weird. It's here. Uh, you know. I found one amazing artist on on hashtag Final Fantasy on Twitter. Uh, I wanted to show, so I'm gonna take like three minutes of the game. Uh, here it is. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna mute. I'm just gonna have to mute the game for one second and uh, there's so many so many wonderful things you can find on on hashtag hashtag uh, final fantasy on twitter if you're wh whenever uh, listen to this
<laughs> 746 subscribers is too low for me. Yeah, absolutely. This is amazing. I Yeah, she should she should have like yeah, that's not even a laughing matter. Like she deserves at least 10k. Cuz I could honestly download this and make this into um, Let's see. Okay, Final Fantasy main theme. We'll, we'll I, I haven't listened to this. We'll, we'll check out this one as well. Man, it's so good. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll listen to this as well. Like I was saying, like I, I would honestly, I, I would download this, make it into an audio file, put it in my phone, and wake up to this. I'm, I'm considering doing that because, um, not only is she playing the instrument, I'm assuming she's also. Uh, making the video, assembling it in the correct order. Like there, there's a lot of uh, co uh, like composition, the composition of everything, making everything together. There's a lot of work behind this, and um, I can appreciate that. So yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll even link her channel. And we'll give it a like too. Finding content creators uh, in uh, on Twitter uh, that do the same as uh, as me and and you, uh, it's been a true joy so far. Like m meeting people, uh, doing like uh, just engaging with the content, it's so amazing. Um, yeah, this is another one, Beast Lord the J or be just Beast Lord on. Um, on Facebook. Yeah. So I went through this earlier, but uh, I I'm, I could just uh, link this as well, because uh, these are these are content creators in like sim similar positions to us basically. Beastlord actually I checked his Twitch, and he actually has a thousand followers on Twitch. Although I'm assuming he's newer to to um, to Twitter because. Um, like in comparison to his Twitch, there's not not uh, th that's not as big, but yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of content here, and you could see like definitely several several hours of work into into this uh, uh, episode. So so for for anyone who who likes Final Fantasy content, I I would I would recommend this absolutely. But yeah, that's small, oops. typically green. I'll go back to the game now. Let's see, here. There's
There we go. So in worst case, I will find the last two chests and this will just be like an XP grind. Sorry, I'll turn down the volume a little bit. There we go. I'll just uh, I'll keep getting experience here and then uh, if I haven't found the chest and I'm out of the ca of the cave uh, I'll go back to Altair re retrace the the hints and the lore uh, yeah I'm a hundred percent sure I was in I were in both those rooms yeah. I was I was in that door as well. So yeah. Also, you know, you know what? I I could just actually, because I'm here, since I'm since I'm here streaming. Uh, let's see. Uh, oops. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I I already had it since I'm already here. Uh, just give you like a minute preview. Cause I'm very cause I'm so excited about it. A little bit stuck here. Uh, let's see here. Come on, why, why, why won't you play? What's wrong? Okay, here we go. I think. Here we go. Uh, there. Then again, I'll I'll just do like the first minute. We've been trying it out after playing FF14. Okay, here we go. At the end of the year, I decided to play Final Fantasy 1 Remastered. I got interested in trying it out after playing FF14 for some time. So here it is, a full playthrough of Final Fantasy 1 Pixel Remaster. You can also come see me live at Mangini on Twitch. Now this was actually the first game I ever streamed from start to finish and I had a great deal of fun. I learned a lot of uh, Final Fantasy lore 
but uh, I also learned a lot about streaming in general. Uh, this video game footage is about 25 hours compressed into about 5.5 hours of highlights. It contains every boss, dungeon, key item and about every chest as well. So with that said, I hope you enjoy the video. I have no idea what that's... Yeah, so that's all I'm going to show, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's what I'm doing, and that was the first, uh, first minute or so, or so. so sorry about that audio, so yeah, uh, let's see, all right, all right, all right, back to the game now. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty pretty sure you know you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna check the door yeah. anyways I'm like 95% sure I've been in that door but yeah <clears throat> yeah empty Yes, finally, Thunder leveled up. That's good. That's a good thing. See here. So I'll definitely need, uh, I'll definitely want to go back to Altair. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's something with the dreadnoughts we need to check out. Maybe even go back to Castle Finn, for all I know. We might just, yeah, we'll see at Altair. Mm. Did I check? this door man my my memory at times is not my not my strongest weapon I've been, I know I've been in all these three doors, so no need to check that. Uh, yeah. Kind of feel bad, because sure, I did get the experience and stuff, but it still kind of feels bad because I didn't really, I didn't really do anything in this game today. Just leveling up. 
but I, I'm if nothing else I, I assume I'll be needing the the levels so that's a small comfort Okay, uh, we might just be outside now. Sure, you can post, man. Don't worry. Oh, there's the chest. Ha, 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 ha. How didn't I see that one? Okay, so that's at least one. You can, you can post, man. Do, 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 Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, I'll actually I'll stop the game just a second for this. Let's see here. Podcastage. Ah, yeah, yeah. For the Azure SM7B. Yeah. Oh, $7,000 mic. Nah, that, that, that's not for me. For now, at least. Okay, man, th this guy is all about mics, it seems. And audio interfaces. Whoa. Yeah. We'll, we'll subscribe for that. And uh, check that out later can watch a video for yeah sure we'll watch three minutes sure this vr is in a sad state of affairs it's missing half of happy this is pathetic i guess it's fitting for the year we just had greetings earthlings and welcome back to podcastage my name is boomer drew not to be so i'll just i'll have to fix the um you know what i'll just do it like this that's better be confused with yep. bandrew now you may be watching this video and thinking yikes this boomer drew guy's looking a little rough around the edges looks like he just crawled out of the dumpster his suits all wrinkly his tiara is a mess his hair is going gray and fall yeah yeah I, I look like the balled up panties of 2021 i look <laughs> like an absolute mess the only thing i'm willing to say is we survived we did it so let us go ahead and sigh a breath of relief. <laughs> and also a celebratory popper. Yay. <laughs> that was so climat and anti climat not clim anti climactic. <laughs> I also struggle the smell with of gunpowder. The one thing that brings me any joy. <laughs> and without further ado, here is the retrospective of the box throws of this year to symbolize throwing this year in the trash where it belongs just like last year okay yeah this was like a compilation of something goodbye 2021 uh yeah okay we'll do we'll do this one greetings earthlings today i'm back with a re-review of one of the most popular microphones that's currently available on the market after i've been oh. using it for six years if you weren't able to guess by the title of the video or the microphone in frame, this is the Shure SM7B, which is a broadcast dynamic microphone. If you are yeah. interested, it will cost around $400. And like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. And for this review, I'm running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i22nd Gen, 
My gain is set just at around 4 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly doo to see what I diddly did. And I do want to note, I am not using a fed head, I am not using a cloud lifter, and I am not using any inline preamp. This is running directly into the interface. Now okay. let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you are going to get the microphone. You'll get two windscreens, one being a normal one, the other being a big fat foam one. Okay. You'll get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a back plate to cover the switches on the rear of the microphone. You'll get a cable. He's, uh, from the looks of it so far, he, he, he's uh, thorough. Uh, I like that. Uh, going to, uh, going even like small details like this, uh, I appreciate it tie, a little bit of documentation, and a sticker. Damn, it's stickers. Stickers are the worst. Then as far as the build quality, I have zero complaints. I've been beating the crap out of it for six years, and it's still running like a champ. It does have an all-metal body as well as a metal mesh grill underneath the foam, which does not have any give to it. The mounting system is made out of metal as well, and you have knobs on both sides to loosen or tighten the mount down. On the end of the mount, you'll find a 5 8 inch threaded microphone stand mount, as well as an You know, if if you don't mind, I, I might just uh, watch a little more of this, because I'm very I'm very interested in, in the mic. Uh, so, if you don't mind, I would, or I could just go straight into the game again. But I, I would want to watch just a little more, at least. Okay? Yeah? Yeah, we'll, we'll watch a little bit more. Sure. XLR port at and on the at least until uh, like I I don't want to see like versus all the different stuff, but I I'll want to see like the main things about this mic at least. The rear of the microphone, you have two switches. The first one being a high pass or low cut filter, and the second one being a presence boost. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Mexico and China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, mm -hmm. a sensitivity of negative 59 dB, and an impedance of 150 ohms. Now I'm spinning around the SM7B to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Ooh, Continuing around nice. to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic. Whoa. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there we go. And then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Whoa, that, that's crazy. That, ah, man, I wish I could just buy it tomorrow, but unfortunately I'm, I'm not a millionaire. Uh, so uh, that won't happen. <laughs> that won't happen. But yeah, I'll, uh, now I want this mic even more. Now let's test the plosive rejection of the microphone with the provided windscreens. Please bring pizza pronto. 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 Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing and gosh darn it does it sound good right on top of it. Now I'm three inches off of the SM7B with it pointed to the corner of my mouth and here's how it's sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, which you should never do. About two feet away from the microphone, which you should really never do. And about four feet away from the microphone, which you should really, 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 really never do. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the game and folk, now I'm typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Yeah. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. I know the microphone is blending in, so just so you can see it's there. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room, just a couple inches away from my mouth. And now, because the microphone comes He's on this so mount thorough. and you're not able to use a shock mount, I want to see how it rejects shocks. So I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. Okay. And then I'll tap on the boom arm. That's not bad. 
Now because I want to be thorough, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. That's nothing. Now I want to demonstrate oh, how the provided foam windscreens impact the sound that's being recorded. So currently I have the windscreens off of the microphone, just the metal grill is there and here is how it's sounding. Now I have the thinner foam windscreen installed and you can hear a slight change in the tone. It darkens it up a little bit, but it doesn't do too much to the sound. It's not the most noticeable thing. And now I've installed the big fat foam windscreen and you should be able to hear quite a big decrease in the top end. It really tames a lot of that down. For some people, they may like that. In other cases, it may darken it up a little bit too much and you may want to stick to the smaller foam windscreen or using the microphone just with an external pop filter as opposed to either of the foam windscreens, which do dampen the top end. Now I want to demonstrate the filter switches on the rear of the microphone. Up until now, the microphone has been in the neutral mode, and this is what it's been sounding like. Now I've switched on the high pass or low cut filter. You should hear quite a big change in the lower frequencies. It really thins out my voice. It really removes anything going on down there. I personally think for spoken word, it's a bit aggressive, but it's there if you need it. This is the high pass filter. Just as a palate cleanser, we're back in the neutral mode so you can hear how this sounds before we switch on the presence boost. And now I've switched on that presence boost switch and again, you should hear quite a big difference. A lot more top end information, a lot more forwardness in the mids, a bit more nasalness or nasality or na whatever you want to call it. Quite a big change in tone by switching mm. on that presence boost switch, but there it is. And here is another palate cleanser. We are back in the neutral mode before we try one last setup of those switches okay. and here it is my least favorite sounding version of the sm7b that high pass or low cut and the presence boost are engaged and i just think this sounds a bit too thin and a bit too boosted in the top end simultaneously it just doesn't work in my opinion but in case you need it it's there and now we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the sure sm7b yeah, this is, and a um, bunch of other this is where i uh, end the um, video but yeah, he definitely deserves the views. Like I can see right here, he has like 20,000 views for this, uh, 280,000 sub subscribers. And he, like from, from the six minutes I've seen, six, seven minutes, it, he, he, he truly deserves it because this is very thorough. It's uh, well, man, it's well organized. Uh, every every little thing is taken into consideration so far uh, and yeah that's um, that's really really awesome so uh, thanks for the link man and I'll, I'll definitely check more of this video out but not uh, not right now On off stream, one can view the seven thousand dollar microphone video. Yeah, I could probably do that. Uh, although I ca I can't imagine a universe where I can buy where where I can buy the um, the seven thousand one. Uh, by the way, how how's my audio? Am I am I on the low side? Is this fine? It's fine. Yeah. Uh, the problem with my microphone is, so this microphone is quite quite cheap. It's um, uh, I could even show you actually. Uh, let's see here. I just want to make sure I don't have any passwords or anything shown. So I'll show you the game in just a second. Let's see. P 
Because yeah, we we're, were talking about mics, so I, I might might as well just show you show you my my mic. Uh, when it comes to gain adjustment, the game must stay in the green and of the mixer almost reaching the yellow. The streamer's voice must stay in the yellow almost reaching the red. Okay? So, the streamers must reach, reach the yellow. Okay? So, I'm just, since you're here, I'm just playing with the audio. So right now, the streamer is reaching almost at the red. And then you would want the game music to reach almost the same, like at mid the green, stay, stay in the green area. Okay. So th this might just be a little bit painful to you because uh, I'm playing with the audio systems now, but uh, how's this? Is this better? Going into the red one, uh, going into the red on rare occasion is fine. Your voice is loud and clear. All right, that's nice. And now let's say suddenly I'm talking to Arya, and there's I can see there's a lot more uh, background noise now than it was earlier because I've stayed very close to the mic and talking lower. But what I can see is there's more background noise right now, but that's fine. As long as it's not, as it's not a no no noisance for anyone. So yeah. Uh, yeah, the game itself must never reach the yellow and reach red. Yeah. Uh, I, would all, I, I would always want to have the uh, audio for the game lower than the the streamer like maybe even just 50% of the streamer because it's it's supposed to be there in the background that's my opinion at least so all right Uh, yeah, I wanted I wanted to show you my mic, and I'm I'm not pr proud of my mic or anything. Indeed, that's the reason why the colors exist to use for comparative reference. Yeah. Okay, so here is a trusted uh, so, uh, net internet source. So I might as well. Uh, so I, I haven't read this link but just to give you an impression of my mic uh, what my microphone looks like and I can even show you here so here I've got my microphone and then I actually I'm not using the arm that it came along with uh, I'm using something I al already have because it has more. Um, I can basically play with around with the one I I already I'm already having. I already bought, but I do have the arm that goes along with it. If I ever want to mix it up. So yeah. Yeah, uh, well, that was some derail, man. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the game because we already streamed th uh, almost three hours today, and I've done nothing in FF2, or except for uh, leveling up. 400 gil. You know, this this early in the game, that's fine. 
I'll take all the guild I can get at this point in the game. So yeah, th this mic is nothing special. Uh, but I've got to got to make do with, with what I have right now. There's supposed to be one more chest, but um, can't really seem to find it, so that's fine. I was so sure there was a chest at the end, but uh, didn't find it. <clears throat> I'm gonna get some water. I'll be right back. Uh, 40 seconds. Man, Arya is, uh, she's not herself today. Look at this. She's just, she's so tired. Uh, yeah, she's like, uh, just, yeah, it's probably after the puking and stuff. So, she's just relaxing right there. Trying to get some peace. Well, at least she's resting. Okay, we're we're finally out, man. That was some de detour, but if nothing else, we did we we found we. We didn't even find uh, the both the remain remaining chests, but that's that's fine. There, uh, the last chest might actually be hidden be behind some something we're supposed to do later and and stuff like that. So it's fine. Now we want we want to because we're already so far north. We might as well just take a quick. Uh, tour back to Salamand. Uh, just make sure there's no. Uh, how to say? Make sure there's n nothing, uh, no lore forgotten, anything like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, because after all, it's been almost a week since last time. <clears throat> And it's about time we also headed out from the cave, because I can see Arya is out of MP. Uh, but that's okay, because we have lots of MP on Minwu.
Man, it's so good to finally be back and so like honestly so happy <laughs> that I finished my my uh, editing because I'm I've all I'll, I've almost just dreamed about being able to just sit here, relax, play video games, uh, talk with talk with you uh, or any other who might want to show up. Uh, getting to know more people. Um, yeah, just just an amazing experience. And I'll I'll definitely make sure to be more on Twitter, on the Final Fantasy hashtag because you you never know what you you. There there might just be. Some someone amazing. Wanting to be discovered by someone else. And uh, I want to find people, like, I want to find all sorts of people engaged with this universe. Like, I want to find people ahead of me. I want to find people, uh, like, maybe people that are going through, like, the same as me, basically. I want to find people, uh... Ooh, longbow, ooh! I didn't know. Uh, so basically, oh, this is also better. And the maze. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, that was... Let's see. So this has better accuracy. But worse attack. Okay. That doesn't make sense to me. Because it said it... Uh, let's see. 20 accuracy... 50 evasion attack 20 accuracy 50 evasion 2 attack 13 50 evasion no, 50 ac uh, 50 accuracy 2 evasion okay i'm pretty sure it said that was better or did i buy was it maybe it was the broadsword i bought no it was the long sword i bought well that was a waste of kill okay um wait, wait, wasn't the mace better? Like whenever I bought Like it says that this one is better. Doesn't it? Cuz it has like the green plus sign, so it got me confused. Okay. Okay, this one has more attack, so we're we're gonna go with that at least. Man, that that was some. Um... Yeah, that was not good. Gil lost basically. But yeah, of course the mithril mace would be better. Now, we're gonna talk with the NPCs here. Just make sure we... Um... Yeah, so this is after these guys are talking to us about uh, this stuff and you're still outside of the house. Why, why won't you just uh, go into Joseph? Because you never know. Thanks for saving me. Uh, if there's anyone who might have info, it's this guy. The cowardly Borgen had been threatening Nelly to get to me. I'm, I'm, I think Borgen was the boss at the um, cave. Uh, key items. Let's see. I'll ask here about the dreadnought. 
Since the Dark Knight took over, construction's been moving ahead a lot faster than before. I hear it may even be close to finished. Okay. Yeah, I know I know about Sid, so that's fine. Okay, so they're speeding up the building of the dreadnoughts. Okay. Okay. We want to upgrade the fire as well. So I, I can assume this is a part of the game that other people or many people could find a little bit tedious. Is that you have to like level up every spell. And I, I can understand why that feels bad. But, but uh, honestly for me, because I've... <sighs> I have like countless, countless hours, honestly, like days, if not years, uh, with the hours played World of Warcraft, with the grind day stuff. So it doesn't, it doesn't really bother. It doesn't bother me that much. Now, I don't, that doesn't necessarily mean I enjoy the grind, uh, but uh, I can definitely get through it. Um, but my, uh, let's see, yeah, you know what, I, I might just explore down here, because I don't think I've walked the whole route. So I might just walk here, just in case I find something new, and uh, we'll, we'll also save. So yeah, but my, my first immediate reaction to the combat system here is that it's different in both good and bad ways. There, it's different in good ways because I feel like you have several more choices than in FF, like with the bow and stuff. And then... I, I It wouldn't... Like, personally, for me, it wouldn't be necessary that you would have to level up every skill. Now, on the other hand, I do think it's kind of nice that you can, at least from the looks of it, and I don't know, like... If there are like builds that the uh, like one character should probably have one have one weapon uh, like like this guy should have say this uh, Mangini should have a specific specific role and Arya should have a specific role based on their character. I don't know if it's anything like that, but the way I assume it is, it's that any of the characters can be anything they want, and I like that. I like the uh, the open um, how to say I, li I like that I can do anything like let's say if I wanted to have two people shooting with a bow and a, a tank and a healer I could probably do that I probably wouldn't get far because I would have to I would need some people that uses MP like a black mage basically but if I wanted, I could do that, try it out. Let's see here. So. I'll talk, talk with the princess. Ooh, fire leveled up. Very nice. Okay, we'll get some rest first.
The Dark Knight, overseeing the Dreadnought's construction, was most capable. Fortunately for us, he's tending to other matters now. The theft of the Mithril has likely knocked the Empire off balance. I would like you to the journey to Bavsk. Man, wh what am I doing? <laughs> Why? Why? What am I? Why am I doing this to myself? Why? Why? Why can't I just? Why? Why didn't I just look at my wad before uh, playing today? Because if if I only had looked at the wad, uh, I could have gone lengths today. But yeah. So here's the irony or not the irony but um, here's the funny funny business and I'll show I'll show you but uh, my webcam is a little in the way so I'll try to remove that Let's see There we go. Okay, so here it is. So when I logged on today, I went first. I took an airship here to Kashwan. Tried to get in, but the door was locked. Went all the way around, and I said, "And here I came." And I came around. Uh, okay, so I had to go all the way around because the airship it just left. And now I truly mean. <laughs> Whenever you said uh, the last time that you can get really stuck in this game because it really doesn't help if you don't pay attention to the NPCs and stuff. The game will punish you. And it did punish me today for that mistake. So yeah, I came here. I walked all the way around. And then I came up here right next to the city and I said... You know, I probably shouldn't go to Bavsk. That's a derail. I think it's too early. If I remember correctly, I need to talk to Sid. So I'll try. So I yeah. So that that's actually what happened. I tried to. I talked to Sid first. Went to Kashwan. Evaded Bavsk. Uh, went all the way here. Spent time in the cave and doing other stuff like YouTube and stuff. All the way back to Salamand, and then. Yeah, and now now we're here basically. So we'll give this another attempt, and this time we'll go straight to um, to the goal. I gotta <laughs> I gotta get something done today because so far I've just been messing around in the in the game. Like I've done a lot of other stuff besides the game, but yeah. Oh, I already did, already did that, so that's nice. Uh, let's see. So, Sugar, will you be going live today? Let's see. Take. I actually have quite a bit of gills, so I could take some po high potions. And, and yeah, here and he I'll I'll take one more. Yeah, later on. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Sugar is also a streamer, and uh, Sugar streams uh, need to do, do laundry. Yeah, sure. Uh, she streams uh, Final Fantasy 14 and you you get a really chill vibe getting into that stream um, the way I understand it sugar basically uh, goes through other content than MSQ sugar do does like uh, yeah like dungeons and dungeons that not part of MSQ and stuff and Right now is at uh, sh uh, still doing uh, AR, AR, uh, ARR. So for anyone else watching, you can de definitely check that out. 
later on. It's a good vibe. Now, where was I? Uh, just walking all the way now. I, I believe I could take an airship or something, but I might as well just get the XP. <clears throat> I'm actually getting used to the this audio now. I, I still miss the o OST from FF1 so much because it's so beautiful man it's it's really something else but um yeah this is also growing on me definitely my experience is that it's always cheaper going to rest in a city so whenever you have an opportunity to do it might as well just do it See now onwards to Basque. Okay, here we are. Uh, we might just want to use potion. Yeah, that's all we need for now. Oh, are they gone? No, here they are. Okay. Uh, you're with the rebels, right? You got to destroy the red knots. You'll need a pass to board the dreadnought, okay? Uh, I want a quick save, definitely. There we go. Okay, I don't need any more potions, stuff like that. There's a door here. I believe we checked this door the last stream, but okay, sanctuary, okay. I do for you fear tone okay nothing I want right now now I'm gonna do something I probably shouldn't do but I want to try to beat this captain dude uh, mr. dude captain over here so we saved our game uh, we're ready to try it out Might be might be my second or third time dying. What's this? Ah, this is Borgen. 
Back to work. Work, I say. If we finish even one day sooner, my glory will be exponentially greater. Ah, so he wasn't actually... Uh... They're making us work like slaves. I hate that Borgen. Okay. Being used by a man like that really makes my blood boil. It's uh, weird though. I can't seem to remember what things were like when the Dark Knight was in command. Okay. Yeah, those are the same as uh, Salamand. Can I enter? I'm gonna try to enter here. No, doesn't let me. Uh, General Borgen took command of things in Bavsk a short while ago. Things have gotten much easier that they were under the Dark Knights. Uh, it's hard to believe a bumbling idiot like Borgen could become a general in the Imperial Army. Oops, mm, did you hear that? Oh. So you're the ones they sent to destroy the Dreadnought. Don't worry, I'm on your side. Ah! Ah, good thing I asked. There's an entrance to the sewers up ahead. It's a back way leading to the Dreadnought. Be careful. All right? If they see us talking, they may start to get suspicious. So I'm out of here. Good luck. Man, we're fine. We got a guy on the inside. Feels good. That, that was just by coincidence I found this guy. So, And there he goes. Okay, so... We're gonna explore this, but quickly first, I gotta take a bio break. But yeah, we still got a 40 minutes of stream time today. Uh, quick bio and I'll be right back. Ah, water. Can never get too much water. Oh, you can actually. You can drown if you get too much water. So that's not true. Now. We're here. Come on. Let's go. Let the go. Ooh. Now. Before we go on. Just. Because this is my first time. Just take a quick moment to to enjoy this audio. Okay, all right. It's very. Uh, this is dramatic. Uh, probably the most dramatic, like even more dramatic than. Uh, 
the music uh, against uh, chaos in my opinion so yeah that that's something man that that's something Whoa, what a transition. I'm sorry for being like super geeky, but like audio uh, gaming music, uh, exploring new gaming music, that's like one of my true joys of uh, playing new games. And Aria is just rolling around for a bit. Longsword, don't need that. Okay, so there's something I've learned from playing FF1, and that is, like, if you can see the map here and there's no mobs, like, 9 out of 10 times, there's not, like, a special mob, there's not something hidden, whenever it's, like, it's showing everything. But from other RPGs, I'm so used to checking, like, everything. And that's, um, that's probably a good habit, because uh, that habit is probably what, uh, and with a little help of course, is probably what made me find the caravan at one point. So I have this habit, I want to just, I just want to check and, uh, but at the same time I feel like, man, I'm just postponing. I'm just postponing uh, going to where because I I need I know I need to go to that stairs. I know it's in my heart, but at the same time, maybe there could be like a hidden door. I don't know. Maybe like like maybe the the pixels don't show it. Like here, who's to say it's not a hidden door right here? For all, for all I know, there could be like a second universe right here at this this square. But for now, it only gives me a, a combat. A whole a whole other map on that square. And. That that's not so realistic, at least with modern game stuff like that. But in some games, uh, old games like eighties games, nineties game, there there could be like weird things like that going on. You never know. So yeah, I'm I'm wondering if it's like because it's my generation. That I do that. I'm, I'm actually very curious if someone 10 years younger than me or 20 years younger than me would bother. Or like, would every 15 year old today or 18 year old today want to play the game blind? Or would any, would any, not every, but would any? I don't know. Because imagine if you grew up your whole life, basically. And for all your life, you had like uh, guides, uh, like several videos about everything. Because I, I'm not doing this because like 
I'm not walking on every square because I love it. I'm walking on every square because it's a habit after playing game after game after game and not having the internet. That's why I do it. So if I would have a childhood where I could basically go on YouTube and type how to play Final Fantasy and then I could get like a 30 minute video it could explain me all the mechanics, all the key items, how to use them, when to use them, uh, all the loot, all the abilities, whatever they do. Uh, like, if, if my whole childhood were like that, then I probably wouldn't. Because it doesn't really... <clears throat> I don't think it comes, comes down to what you enjoy. And that might be a little pessimistic, but I think it comes down to habit. So it's it's not really a matter of efficiency either. It's I think it's purely like habit, because then I they, then I can use the part of my brain that's on a that's on an auto loop basically. Because I play games in a certain type of manner and by not changing that I can stick with a program that my brain is already wired to, to using. But if I mix it up then uh, I have to like think. <laughs> I have to use another part of the brain and make like choices and stuff and that's tough. I don't want to make choices. I want to, I just want to, I just want to do stuff. I don't want to think of them beforehand, for now at least. But now I'm now I'm just rambling. You got yourself another rambling monologue by Mangini. Ooh, here's a Garland looking guy. Although it's probably not Garland. I would expect that it's not Garland. Let's see. You're too late. The Dreadnought is complete. I've been working behind the scenes to see the project through to completion. End your resistance. Kneel before your Emperor. It is the only alternative left to you. Consider what I've said. When the time comes, we will meet again. <laughs> Looks like you come all this way for nothing. See for yourselves. No, don't go. Let me join you. Come on. Or did I join you? Oh. Oh, what did they just do? No, no. What just happened? Those bastards. Have they no shame? Ah oh, man. Goddamn Empire, man. Just doing whatever they want. Now. I got a new achievement. <clears throat> it's called... The Empire's Blitz. The Empire destroyed numerous towns with the Dreadnoughts. Yeah, I believe that was Paloom, Poft, and Altair. Man, that feel, feels bad, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, and whenever I'm looking at the achievement here. Let's see. 
64.7% of players have this achievement. So yeah. Uh, so that's good actually. I like the fact that most players came to this part of the game. Because then you've been able to entertain most of your players. If they were as if they're as bad as me. <laughs> uh, for at least six hours. So that means if most players were are as bad as me at this game, they at least got six hours content. So that's a good sixty-five uh, percent. So that's a good thing. I was hoping to get a battle against uh, any of the two of them, but I didn't. But we're getting a chest here. Ooh, we find the pass. Nice. We needed that. Ah yeah, ah yeah, that's a good thing. So, good thing we actually got, uh, uh, we actually got some things done today. Oh, is this like a teleport? Yeah, I'll just... Oh, okay. Leave? Yeah, okay. Okay, it was a teleport. I was a little skeptical because you never know, man. You you, you never know. Um... I wanna, before I go ahead, I wanna check this town, see if there's still emperor, uh, soldiers here. Uh-uh. That's nice. No soldiers. I like that. I'm, I, I'm wondering if we get to see that guy again. The guy that was on the inside. Uh, the guy who let us go in uh, the cave. If that's like, maybe a character with with uh, more depth to it because that would be nice now you still have the same things for sale oh i'm kind of kind of scared to go back to the other cities because i'm afraid some people might have died or something okay here's some lore the dreadnought is headed for puffed maybe it's already too late We have to tell Princess Hilda that the dreadnought's been completed. She may know how to stop it. Okay. They finished the dreadnought. The world we know is over. The world we know is over. The, 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 the dreadnought. We're d d doomed. Okay. I also want to check this room right here. Oh yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting because it it doesn't remind me of a sanctuary. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was it for for Bavsk. Then we'll head over to Poft and uh, yeah, we'll. Head over to Poft, and from the, from there we'll get some info on what to do next. Man, now the really the game is really opening up nicely. I like that. But yeah, uh, definitely a slower entry to this game than than FF two, no FF one, because on FF one I got so much done on the second day. But. Um, yeah, it's been like a week since I streamed, and I had, I had so much on my on my heart. I wanted to talk about so much other stuff. Uh, 
and I'll try to as long as it's relevant of course as long as it's relevant uh, like in terms of uh, Final Fantasy universe or or um, or anything else uh, that's relevant to the stream I'll I'll probably continue doing that because it's good to mix it up with some some additional content like especially uh, let's see yeah puffed I just want to finish my my train of thought before I I go inside so yeah, especially when it comes to like other content creators and uh, other content crea creators that are on on the same type of uh, um, uh, content as me, like any kind of Final Fantasy, basically. Uh, that's not spoiling too much. Like, for example, if someone had a lot of info on FF Five. Uh, then maybe I shouldn't go into that yet. Like I would still try to play blind, but if there are people in like the same situation as me playing and being quite new, I would really like to meet meet up or uh, yeah, basically just see what what their content is and and try to get some connections there, because uh, growing is also sharing and sharing is caring. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's see. Oh man, I already know something bad is up. Oh man, all the all the all the <laughs> all the. Uh, Robots that said the exact same thing because there were like nine eight or nine NPCs here who said the exact same thing. They're all gone uh, Learn Nothing happens What you want to do is blow up that thing's engine. Do that and you can bring down the whole overgrown to, uh, tub. Can I interest you folks in a ride on Seed's Pride and Joy? The only airship it's uh, kind of world, but yeah. Uh, yeah, not, not for now. Because uh, I need to go to Princess Hilda. We were attacked by the Dreadnought. They're dead. They're all dead. Uh, I'll I'll might buy the uh, I'll maybe I'll buy my way to Palum. Can save me some time. And then always resting here better than using potions and ether. So yeah, doing that is a good thing. Man, I can't wait until I get a new new microphone. I really want it. More than anything else in the world. Yeah. I'm uh yeah, I'll actually I'll pay the entry ticket to Palum. Why not? Why not? 32 gil. I can afford that. Quit your dawdling and get on board. It's the ship right in front of town. Can't miss it. Alright. Alright, sir. Now, I believe they bombed this city really bad. So, yeah. Oh, look at that. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll we'll talk with all these guys as well. I'm hurt, hurt bad. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Okay. You look fine to me, man. Like you're walking and stuff. My daughter. Oh, this is dramatic. My daughter. They killed my daughter. Whoa. I, d I don't know what to say to that. The dreadnought attacked and destroyed the entire, entire town. Uh, yeah. It's actually quicker to go outside and then inside and then pay for the ship. Because now I don't have to wait, walk all the way around. Now, I don't... This is my biggest criticism of FF2 so far. I don't like the copy pasta. I don't like the copy paste. I don't like the nine NPCs in that room. They're all gone now, but I don't like them saying the exact same thing. And I don't like the ticket fairs or uh, whatever they're called. The, the, the guys who sell the tickets. That they're saying like the exact same thing. Except for the name of the city I'm uh, sailing to. Because it would be so little effort. Even in 1987. It would be so little effort to just write another... Uh, text like a anything else like an anything else no. uh, I'm really not, not paying attention now because I was supposed to go to Altair so why am I doing this back we go All right. See, um, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh man, this is all... <laughs> this is not good. Everything's blown to pieces. Uh, I hope the king is alive because he was like in his bed. Oh! This feels like new NPCs. Did I talk with this one before? Oh man, this game is so so dramatic compared to FF1, in terms of the text at least. Everybody who was outside is dead. The dreadnought attacked, but at least our hideout uh, is still safe. That's a good thing. Yeah, I did talk with Sid already, so uh, thanks for the tip, uh, but I, I'm, I'm pretty... Caught up with that. Prince Gordon's disappeared. I wonder where he could have gone. Okay. I'm scared. Please, Lord. Save our king. The king? Something wrong with the king? If we don't destroy the dreadnought, the casualties will only mount. I'll take... I'll get the, the dreadnoughts. It's just a matter of time. Now, I want to I wanna check the king first, because I, I have a bad feeling. Oh. So, we'll look, yeah, this is the same as before. Making food to prepare for stream. Be back soon. Alright, man. Uh, yeah, anyone? 
anyone who doesn't know Sugar Cookie is also uh, streaming. And I've got about 13 minutes left, so you might just give that a try. But we're not finished here yet. We still got um, a little bit more content. Uh, we definitely want to finish up here in, in this city and maybe just a little more. We'll have to see. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure I've heard that text before. Let's see. Many were wounded in the Dreadnought's attack. The shock has even caused my father's condition to take a turn for the worst. I hate that my father has to see this. He knows, he knows his death is near. Man, so dramatic. Is there nothing you can do, Minwu? All those who live must someday die. It is our fate. Whoa, that's true. What an answer. He's a healer and he's like, nah, everybody's gonna die anyway, so who cares? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, here comes some more text. Still, it is my duty as a white wizard to ease the pain of those who suffer. True. Don't walk away from your responsibilities, Minwu. I shall remain here and devote myself to the care of the wounded. I take my leave of you. Oh, really? The fate of the world rests on you, Mangini. Waste no time in destroying the dreadnoughts. I will not. Min will left the party. No, my healer. Oh, and I didn't upgrade the heal for uh, Arya. No, but what about Billy? My father's condition has improved a great deal thanks to Minwu. Really? I'm just checking everything here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hmm, you see, it happened just as I said it would. Obviously, the task was more than you could handle. Man, shut up. I don't want any, 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 anything like that. I'm doing the best I can, okay? Trying. Really trying. Now... Yeah, I want a new lesson on magic, because I feel like this is super important. And it's been like a week since I've done this game, so... Uh, gotta check this out quickly. Black and white, yeah. Healing, yeah. Black magic specializes in offensives. Blizzard, thunder, so on. Characters can learn both black and white in any combination they choose. However, a character can only learn a maximum of 16 spells. So what you're really saying here is it would be my advantage to train two or more guys in actually both black and white magic. Because there wouldn't be any restrictions. So I might as well have two of my characters have both uh, black and white magic. Okay. Well, that's good. Ah, anything I'm missing? Any info? Altair wasn't spared the Dreadnought's assault. Lucky for us, the hideout was unharmed. The townspeople have taken refuge here. We'll stay here and hold out until you re return. Okay? Now, I'm gonna have to theorize here a little bit. Um, I'll just, I'll just rest first. Oh no, six skill hurts so much. Okay, 
So here we go. Okay, so I'm thinking about where where the uh, dreadnought could be. Now it could either it could be at the cash one keep, and that's that's like the logical first choice. Uh, can I get into the cash one keep using the pass? Maybe I don't know. We'll have to test it. If that doesn't work, there's Castle Finn, huge castle, uh, and the the uh, I think the Empire has like a huge base in Castle Finn. That's option number two for me. Uh, they're definitely not in Bovsk, Salamand, Poft, Palum. So a third choice may be Finn, because I'm still missing like eight chests in Finn. So it could be it could be there for all I know. Man, my bladder is going like crazy. Be, be right back. All right, so we're already it's we're we basically played like four hours. So uh, I'll do like a recap here because I always like to do uh, a recap of the stream before I finish up, and it's a good way to end because now we have like leads, but we don't know like for certain where we're going, and I feel like the next place we're going is like gonna be. Probably like a, a huge mission. So it, it's a good place to end. I feel like. So yeah. We'll open the world map. Now. Today. Actually I'll, I'll even open uh, Firefox. Because. We could uh, just look through. Every, every, everything actually so yeah I started today with uh, Beast Lord's video which was awesome uh, check out Beast Lord if you're interested in uh, Final Fantasy content definitely uh, after that we did the puzzle game and I, w I imagine it was going to be harder than that, but hey, it was fine. Uh, so yeah, we did the puzzle game, and then we came on to uh, to uh, Final Fantasy 2. Now, we started by taking the path to uh, Paloom, I believe, talked to Sid, flew to Kashwan, took a huge derail, Evaded Bavsk, which was the opposite that we were supposed to do. Uh, we then walked up to Salamant, healed up, uh, 
to the uh, uh, back to the cave here, the uh, Semit Falls. And then on Semit Falls, we only got one of the two chests we were missing, so that feels kind of bad, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we spent a long time in in uh, Semit Falls, and then we went on to like back to YouTube, just for a little bit. And yeah, for, um, let's see here. Did I? Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we went back to YouTube. Uh, and we were, we looked at this amazing flute player, flutist. Uh, yeah, so we we'll definitely, definitely check her out. That was amazing. And then came back to the game. We um, went all the way, gathered information from all the cities. And at the very last city, we finally came back to Altair and went back to Bafsk. Now, in Bafsk, we uh, had talked with one of the Imperials who was actually an inside man. And so he granted us passage into the Bath's cave. And there we met the Black Knight and that uh, commander military guy, the general. Uh, Borgen. Borgen was his name. I remember now. Borgen. So yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get a fight. I was hoping a combat there, but they just ran off in their airship. And yeah, that's fine. So yeah, from there uh, we basically got back to Altair and now we're just theorizing about where to go next. So that's a whole recap of the day, actually. So yeah, it's been uh, another good stream. I'm so happy to be back almost a week since last time. Uh, make sure to smash that follow button for... Uh, for later, I'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. GMT plus one. So if you're into Final Fantasy games, I've already finished FF1. This is my first playthrough. Uh, I'm doing them all blind, basically. So uh, yeah, I'm trying, <laughs> trying the best I can, but I'm moving slowly forward. Uh, so yeah, on that note, I'll say thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.